Last week I was at a conference in Leuven in Belgium called Sec App Dev. My coworker Claudio and I were invited to speak at this conference and also host a workshop. It was a full week full of interesting talks and workshops and I'm very happy I got to go there. The combination of world-renowned speakers and a relatively intimate audience size made for a very unique experience. I think my favorite lecture probably was the one by Lukas Weisselbaum. One of the things that I remember from his talk are the SecFetch metadata headers and how useful they appeared to me. At this conference I got to meet Lucas and Lucas is a tech lead and manager at Google's information security engineering team. Among his list of accomplishments, you can find that he is a co-author of the Content Security Policy 3 specification. During his presentation at SecAppDev, Lucas talked about modern security features for web applications. And these SecFetch metadata headers came up. I really like them conceptually. And so when I got back home, I spent a bit of time playing around with these headers to understand how they help protect against cross-origin attacks, such as cross-site request forgery, and how they differ from other protection mechanisms such as same-site cookies. In this video, I will explain cross-site request forgery, how same-site cookies can protect against these type of attacks. And if you already know this and don't want a refresher, you can skip to the next part where I explain some of the shortcomings of same-site cookies and how SecFetch metadata headers can offer a solution. I've built a small web app to demonstrate today's attack and protection mechanisms. Let's take a look. We get the bank of CS Rust F and since it's the first time we open it, we get a nice greeting. Hi, welcome to your first time at our bank. And our account balance is a thousand dollars by default. And if we cl click the add button, you can see that we're no longer on our first time and that our account balance is increasing and with subtract it is decreasing. The app is built in Rust using the Rocket framework. I'll walk you through the code. So this is a simplification of an app, but I just wanted some cookie functionality to demonstrate. So we have a get route just for the index page. And in this index, we use the cookie functionality. We set a cookie name and then two more variables, the balance and a greeting. So what we want to show on our page. Uh, we check if the cookie is present and if it's not, we set a default balance to $1,000, save it in a cookie and also set a new greeting. Hi, welcome to your first time at our bank. If the cookie is present, we get its value and that is the balance that we will display. So this is uh, the page we render. The second route is the add route and it has a parameter amount. Um, and this parameter is an uh, integer. So not an unsigned integer, it can be a positive or a negative number. In the functionality of this route, we get the cookie and try to parse it as an integer. And then we add the uh, request parameter amount to this balance. This is what we will store in the cookie. And then uh, we redirect to the main page. So let's take a look at what happens when we click these buttons in our network tab. So if we click add 100, we can see a request to our uh, local host address, uh, the add route with amount 100. And if we add to subtract, we can see the same with amount minus 100. Now that I've demonstrated the functionality of the app, and we've done a quick code walkthrough. Let's try to attack this app with a cross origin attack. We'll look particularly at cross site request forgery. So I made a fake website, an evil.com website, which is a phishing website, I guess, with links to our actual website. As you can see, if we go to click homepage, this is, uh, we end up in our regular uh, bank app. But if we want to earn $1 million, all we have to do is click this link. So if you remember our original our account balance, let's go up to 2000 is uh, pretty high, but 1 million is of course much more. Um, of course, this is not what it will actually do. It will in fact subtract $1,000. But a user 
might not look at this and if we click this link you can see that it successfully subtracted one thousand dollars let's do it one more time the balance was one thousand and if we click this it successfully subtracted uh, one thousand dollars without the user intending to Many cross-origin attacks like this are possible because applications on the internet are connected. and They can send requests to each other. Currently, our application cannot easily protect itself from communication originating from other websites. But one way to protect our application from this is by using same-site cookies. These are actually turned on by default in many cases, but I had them turned off explicitly for this demonstration. So instead of using same site none, we'll go for same site strict. With same site cookies, we can still add and subtract the balance as we expect. Let's add up to 2000 for demonstration and voila, this is working like the way we intend. However, if we go to evil.site.com, we can see that if we click the earn 1 million, that this is no longer working. We get an internal server error. However, you'll also notice that currently our balance is $2,000 and this is properly stored in a cookie. But if we click to go to home page, this is also reset, meaning that even if we go to the index page, we no longer send the cookies. And of course, in this case, it was desired to still have the cookies present and not break this functionality. In order to understand how same site cookies function, we need to know what a site is in the context of a browser. In the context of a browser or in the context of same site cookie restrictions, a site is defined as the scheme, the top level domain name, which is usually .com, .net, sometimes it's two things like .co.uk and the top level domain name plus one, which is the, the domain name that you buy essentially. And this triple is called the site. And as you can see, the subdomains are actually missing from the site. And so what is the difference between a site and an origin? Well, an origin is the entire scheme, the entire domain name, including subdomains and the port. So with this context, you might be able to see the limitations of same site cookies. Because subdomains are technically different origins, but they are the same site. So cookies on the same site will be sent. And you might have a subdomain such as an, a forum or an email client or a sort of app where a malicious user could craft links that other users are clicking. In that case, it's possible that cross-origin request forgeries still are possible and same site cookies cannot protect you from that. So let's take a look if we host our own application on csrf.site.com and we still have this evil.site.com like before and its functionality is still working as intended as you can see. Um, let's add our account balance up to 2000 and if we now go to our evil.website.com I have some links to the subdomain to, for demonstration here as well then um, if you click on go to home page you can see that we still have the correct balance in our account and this is because same site cookies are working on the same site these are subdomains so they are the same site even though they are different origins um, and that means if we click the earn 1 million button that uh, you can already expect. Yes, this successfully removes the thousand dollars. And so across subdomains on the same site, this attack is actually still working with same site cookies. So as I've already alluded to before, the solution is to use SecFetch metadata headers. The SecFetch metadata headers are three new HTTP request headers that are added to request by browsers. They are the SecFetch site, SecFetch mode, and SecFetch dest headers. The first one tells us which website generated the request. It can be same origin, same site, cross site, and none. And as you can see, this one is going to be the interesting one for our use case here. We also have SecFetch mode, which tells us the request mode, denoting the type of the request, which can be course, no course, navigate, same origin, or WebSocket. And this can be interesting to look at navigation events, for example, that you still want to allow in some cases. 
and then you have the sec fetch test which tells us the requests destination and denoting where the fetch data will be used this can be a script audio image document object and so on these are relatively new request headers but they are already supported in all major browsers safari was the last one to adopt it with their update to safari 16.4 in march 2023 and we can see them in action on our own application so we are now on evil.website.com and if we go to our csrf.website.com this should be on the same site but on a different origin so we expect this to be cross origin and if we take a look here at the headers and then scroll down to the secfetch site we can see that it is same site um, but now that we are on csrf.website.com uh, if we click this and take a look at the new um, request we can see that it is now same origin so this way we can see the difference between a same site and a same origin request we can implement some checks in our app to verify these segfetch headers in the rocket framework this is as simple as adding new parameters to your request so i've added uh, to the request for our ad route a segfetch metadata uh, variable as you can see here of the segfetch metadata type which is a type i've uh, created myself and it's actually just an empty struct but then we can implement a from request for this type and in this uh, from request function I'll get the segfetch site header and I'll verify its value um, so if it's same origin or if it's none so whenever the requests are same origin or they are browser initiated as in typed in the uh, url bar then i return a success and if not i'll return a failure a bad request this is just a simple example but you can do some more fancy checks uh, but the main thing i want to emphasize is this is only added to the add route and the simple uh, index route is uh, unchanged we, here we have the app on our csrf.website.com and it's functioning as expected and if we now go to our evil.website.com we can see that if we click on go to homepage our cookie is being stored properly but then if we uh, click on the earn 1 million scam button we get a bad request so as you can see it is pretty straightforward to implement a protection mechanism with these segfetch metadata headers you could go a bit more granular and for example allow only navigation events to certain routes and uh, allow cross-site uh, requests to other routes and you have pretty uh, fine control over which routes you deploy which protections which is uh, better than with same site cookies at the same time you can also uh, protect yourself from cross-origin same site attacks such as attacks from subdomains so i hope you learned something from this video uh, if you do give it a thumbs up and you might want to check out some of my other videos bye